Hi, I'm Zenimbar Pixelbottom from the Alchemy Gear team, and I'm here to teach you about some more of the more interesting things about uh, probes. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about the ambience setting that you've probably noticed in these uh, videos. This is a pretty unrealistic test box, but it is quite useful. Uh, it is a box that has PBR materials that are lightly emissive around the sphere. Uh, and there's a single box probe uh, that we are using today in here. Uh, as you can see, uh, based on my handy dandy uh, testing cube here, uh, we do have in, uh, some uh, reflection probe data. But as you can see, there is actually color on this sphere in the center. This isn't actually a proper point light or anything like that. This is just purely the data from the reflection probe itself. And we can actually modify this using the ambience um, uh, box right here. Uh, at zero, it's going to use the minimum reflection probe ambience that the environment has set. So in this case, if we go to personal lighting, we can see that our reflection probe ambience is 1. This means that all of the ambient lighting from our scene is going to come from reflection probe ambience. If we were to set this to something like 5, you notice it got darker because now we're only using a 50%. Where's the other 50% coming from? It's coming from the ambient color on the environment itself. So if I were to set this to something crazy like I don't like a, this gold here, suddenly this sphere is now a different color. This is because it's using half of this uh, ambience right here. And if I were to bring this back up to 1, you would notice it would disappear. Now, as I'm sure you can notice, on this, there's a lot more slider space to go. It's because you can actually go higher. The higher you go, the more it multiplies. So in this case, for all probes in the scene, because I've changed personal lighting, ambient lighting from probes is multiplied by 10. Let's set this back down to 1 and set this back to a non-crazy uh, ambient color. And let's go back to this. So this is the minimum probe ambience for all probes in the scene. This, when you have a probe selected, is the individual probe ambience. You can call this the maximum ambience. And this can go way higher than 10. But, as you can see, if we hit it to 1, nothing changes because the minimum was 1. So it was already rendering as if it was at an ambience of 1. But if we start going higher, 2, 3, we notice the sphere is getting brighter because these walls and their emissiveness are now contributing more to the lighting of this thing. Now, the reason these walls are barely changing in any brightness is because they are fully metallic walls. This means they rely almost entirely on the reflection data rather than the uh, ambient lighting data, which this map sphere uh, is getting. But if we go back to select our box probe, and we keep increasing this, like let's say 10, it's quite bright, but we can go higher, 20, 30, 40, 50, and even 100 if you really want to. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite blown out by this point. But I'm also quite lit too because my avatar is almost entirely made out of PPR materials. So we can actually use me as an example as well. When I start messing with the ambience, it greatly changes how bright my avatar is. And if just set to one, it's quite dark in here, to be honest, so I'm not well lit. And you can actually use this to help brighten up areas that have gotten overly dark because they don't have access to the sky. The sky uh, is currently the brightest object in the entire world, so not having it in view means that some areas can get kind of dark. This would be useful like in a cave that maybe is too that should be maybe a little brighter than it should be. But if like just nudging up ambient just a little bit like that can be just the difference between being too dark and just right for some interior spaces. Uh, 
And the good thing is that these ambient settings also blend between probes. So if I were to add a new probe, and let's uh, make it a sphere, uh, make it a little bit bigger. And if I were to intersect this sphere, you can see that its own ambience value is now uh, affecting this uh, sphere. And we too can actually modify the ambience along with it. See, now that it's set to something silly like 100, it's now washed out by that sphere probe, and I can just keep moving it around. And you can see that it is entirely affected within that influence. And that's probe ambience for you. Uh, it can be quite useful uh, to blend between too dark and too bright areas. And it's just that little extra control to help bring a scene together. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope you'll have a great day.